So the 100 head drawing challenge is a pretty gargantuan effort, and that's why it's a challenge. Um, I like to set short deadlines for things like this, so it's a real press. So maybe like a one to two week timeline would be good for this sort of assignment. The goal of this is to draw small. So anywhere from one to three inch tall heads is where you want to go with it. And the idea is just to put in the mileage. Um, so if you take anywhere from 30 seconds to five minutes per head, I think that's perfect. And these are all done and are sped up to about 15 seconds. So what you want to do with this is try out every different method that you know of using generic head shapes, beginning with circles, beginning with proportional guidelines, um, drawing naturally, and so on. And what I've done for these is just drawn from photo references compiled from the internet. And um, I'm also trying out different mediums that I, um, that I enjoy, have used before, uh, haven't used in a while, and so on. So um, if you haven't done any work with uh, pen and ink, maybe it's time to try that for this sort of thing, because it's, sort of, it's sort of low effort, or um, low consequence, I guess, not low effort. Um, and what I'm kind of thinking through as a, as a general process is I'm drawing roughly the same size, so I can use proportional information from the previous head drawings and bring them over to the next one. And as I do that, I'm able to get more and more refined overall. The goal of this is not to do a good job every single time. Um, there's pretty much no way you're going to draw a, an excellent head drawing every single time. Um, but the important thing is to kind of put in the mileage and realize that you know, hey, you don't have to do, you don't have to be perfect 100% of the time. Um, you can make mistakes, you can try out new things, you can uh, do things a little differently, and there's room for that sort of exploration. You can vary up the order of the process, you can take styles in different ways, you can go more towards an illustration direction or sequential art, you can go in the sort of fine arts direction. You can use styles you pick up from uh, the old masters and kind of classic drawing technique. Um, so there's a lot of room for, for experimentation and exploration. You, know, you, can you can focus on just facial features. You could do a basic head setup and do hair like I've done on this one. You can do um, a focus on like lips or noses or eyes or the sort of brow ridge, the overall anatomy. You can work on necks and kind of leave the head sketchy. Um, and I think these are all valid sort of approaches for this um, for this assignment um, and this, this challenge. And I think putting in the time to do it is um, it's difficult because, you know, you have to kind of set aside time to, to do all these sketches. But in the end, it's kind of worth it because you're gaining a lot of experience and revisiting these concepts every once in a while is, is always good. If you've been drawing for a long time, I think it's nice to, to go back to this sort of thing and, and see where you're at with, um, with head drawing. And, um, as far as you know, technical things go, um, I always keep in mind the proportion. So on a lot of these, I use the uh, standard illustrator's one-third head proportions, where you do a circle, um, divide that in half, and then take that half uh, down, and that gives you your whole overall head height. And what I think, what I've been thinking of proportions as is um, like tailoring a suit. You know, you set up the cut for the fabric, and then you go through and you make it fit the exact person. And I think that that's a great way to approach drawing these days so that it can be um, quick and effective. And one of the other things that, that I didn't do much, but I did here on um, numbers 18 and 19, is reobserve the same 
reference and try again. And I think maybe back to back isn't the best way to do it. Maybe, you, you know, doing a few others and then coming back is probably better because it splits up the learning process. Um, but I think reobserving similar or the same sort of reference or pose is always a good idea because, you know, if you're not completely happy with what you've done, then there's probably a reason for that. And so you can go back through and figure out why that is and how you can make it better. And part of this too is, you know, you're going to get bored with this at times. You know, a hundred of these things is, is a major effort. And I think boredom is the fuel for creativity. You know, if you're, if you get bored with it, then all of the interesting parts have to come from you after that. And I think that's a good place to be with your drawing. So what you want to do is push to the point where you get bored and continue after. And when you continue, that's when the interesting things happen. That's when you're going to get into a magical spot with your drawing because you're going to be at the height of your creative ability, both technically and mentally. <laughs>